For the latest film interviews, reviews and everything making news in pop culture, subscribe to Film Companion now. I don't want people to think like this is some tell all, but this is my book. It's my story on my terms in my voice. Things that I call it the in between interviews book. Priyanka, it's always so good to see you. So good to see you too. Uh, can I just begin by telling you that I love the title Unfinished. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's just fab because all of us are finally just works in progress. It's such a perfect sort of way of encapsulating that. But here's what I'm really curious about. So you have been famous for most of your adult life. Right? More than half my life. Yeah, more than half your life. Um, every move Priyanka has been sort of extensively, meticulously uh, reported in the media. There are already three books about you, unauthorized books about you out there. Uh, you have a massive digital footprint. Uh, we did a quick math and it was 86.6 million followers on Twitter and Instagram taken together. Uh, so here's my question. What, what do you, what will you reveal in this book that we don't know about you? Oh my gosh, that's the joy that I've gotten out of writing this is, you know, there's been so much written about me, so much extensively written about me as if there's a familiarity to my story, but you know, there really isn't. Um, I've been a public person for more than half my life, but this book is, it wasn't supposed to be the way it is actually. Um, it was supposed to be letters sort of to my younger self. I was meandering in my idea of what this book will be. But um, COVID happened and I happened to be at home and I realized that I don't have a lot of memories in my life. I spent so much time sort of running that I didn't have a lot of memories. So I wrote down, a, you know, sort of timelines of my milestones that I remembered and then I built around it. I didn't realize there was so much that I hadn't dealt with in my life um, because I was just looking forward at the next thing. You know, I'm not someone who rests on my laurels. So it's always like, especially in my job, which is completely inconsistent. Like, I don't know when my next check is coming in from where it's coming, right? You always have to sort of hustle for what's the next thing. Um, so I just never realized that I had, there was so much that I didn't deal with. So. I don't want people to think like this is some tell all, but this is my book. It's my story on my terms, in my voice. Things that I call it the in between interviews book um, because no one that's knows lovely. what happened. No one knows what happens then. <laughs> yeah, that's lovely. But, you know, when you say um, so much that I had to deal with, and I saw you said somewhere else that, you know, when you, when you write a memoir like this, um, you do have to reconcile things. Uh, you know, you are sort of coming to terms with things. So can you speak a little more about that? W what kind of things? Well, it won't make my memoir interesting, right? If I tell you that. <laughs> but um, so the way I see it, this book really is, um, it's not about, you know, here is me and this is the way to become, you know, who I became or these are my achievements. Or It's not that book. This book is my journey my trials, my tribulations, I dissect my failures, I dissect my mistakes, my um, sorrows, my grief. Um, and that's not something I've ever done. You know, Anupama, we've had so many chats over all of these years and, you know, we've discussed multiple things, but I've, I've been ferociously protective of allowing, you know, anyone to scratch below the surface because that's just, I've, that's who I've been. And that part of me has been very much for, um, you know, my, my inner circle. But now on the other side of 35, you know, with my feet firmly planted on the ground, I have a sense of self and a sense of confidence in my job. I have a sense of confidence in the woman I am, in the future I'm creating, in my ability to deliver. Um, and I think that made me confident enough to tackle um, a journey that for me was tumultuous. It wasn't easy. Um, it doesn't mean that that's what the world has seen, but I wanted to sort of talk about, I'm hoping that, you know, 
people who read this will get to know me a little bit more as a human being instead of the dinner table conversation or the Instagram story that I sometimes become. Um, I hope people get to know me as a girl with dreams and aspirations and someone who's sort of built a career on my own back and is self-made. And, um, and now I have the ability to be able to look at myself and say, all right, you know, I went through all of this and kind of proud of myself to have gotten through it. Uh, so that's what it is. It's not like, this is not some clarification or my story for the world. It's just me reflecting and I feel like, you know, like you said, I've been a public person for more than half my life, but the consumption of who I really am has been dictated by other people and has been dictated by the familiarity of who I really am, not my work, not my job, not the def definition of, you know, my movies or any of that. I'm talking about as a human being. I'm consumed as a human being as well. And um, it's sort of part and parcel of being a public person, but I want to sort of introduce myself from the place of being a girl who comes from a very unassuming background and, you know, sort of normal family. And if I can be where I am discussing my life in, in the way that I have and, have and have the career that I've had, which I set out to build, then anyone can, you know? Well, listen, you should be very proud of yourself. Uh, you know, I remember when you first, I think it was the first season of Quantico and I think we met in Toronto maybe. And I, I remember telling you that all of us were so proud because it just felt like you had just shifted the goalpost. You know, uh, you got to the height and then you just moved the goalpost and created another goalpost. And, and it's, it's amazing to me, which is why when I read that you said uh, that you, you've come to this place, like you just said, to, to be able to write this book because you felt more secure. Um, and you said, I was insecure earlier, and which made me wonder, what were you insecure about? Um, of swimming in uncharted territory. I've always swum in uncharted territory. When I was supposed to be uh, an engineer or have an academic uh, career, um, you know, when I was very young, I went to boarding school when I was in third grade. I went to America when I was 12 years old. It was my decision that I want to go to America to study high school there without my parents. Um, and, you know, so uncharted territory has sort of always been where and who I am. And even my career for that matter, I never went to acting school. I didn't, and no one in my family has ever acted. My dad used to do school plays and, you know, not on keys and all. But besides that, like, it was all very uncharted. I learned everything on the job. Um, and the same way, it's like when I came to America, I mean, the fact that I was the first person of South Asian descent to ever headline a TV show. I mean, and that was in 2015 or 16. It's very recent. So it was completely uncharted territory. Indians have always, at least for me in Hollywood, when I started, were always put in a stereotypical box of what we should play. And here I was demanding playing mainstream roles and demanding, you know, saying that I don't want to be defined by my ethnicity. And that was uncharted territory completely. It's taken me five years now to finally be doing a leading part in you know, a mainstream romantic comedy or feature or to be doing a leading part or my first dramatic part in, in, in a movie. But it took like breaking down doors. And that's the insecurity when you're trying to go somewhere where there's not an opportunity waiting for you. It's like you don't know the result of that. And that's super scary. Yeah. But Unfinished has become, I think, within the first 12 hours of being on pre-order, it was already a number one bestseller in the US. <laughs> How exciting is that? <laughs> I'm terrified, I can't tell you. I'm so scared. You know, before I could stop the presses, this book kind of went into print. <laughs> by the time I realized, <laughs> by the time I realized how much of myself I'd opened up, um, but it was amazing to sort of see that it went number one in less than like 24. In America, which is a country I've just sort of started working in, then in India, and then like in various territories. I mean, I just, I'm, this is my first time attempt as an author. And it's really, really in my voice because I've literally like recorded my voice um, for most of the stories. And you'll see, I mean, you're a voracious reader, but when and if this comes across you, you'll see that 
I use very long sentences in my writing because that's how I think. Right. You know, I meander and I think about multiple things. So the book is really, really in my voice and my sense of humor and how I speak. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of terrified of, you know, doing it. It's the, for the first time I'm really doing it. So I, um, you know, I hope I'll be forgiven for mistakes and I hope people enjoy the honesty of it, honestly. But Priyanka, how honest were you able to be? When, when you were doing it, were there areas of your life where you just said, no, I'm not going to go there? Um, I was honest about things that mattered to me and my journey right now, which is why I mean, this is a very honest reflection of where I am at the moment. Um, I didn't edit my book in a way of this is something I don't want to talk about or this is something I can't, not at all. If it's true to me at the moment, it's in the book. Um, if it's not true to me in the moment and doesn't matter to me, it's not in the book. It really was very honestly sort of a telling of that tale. You know, congratulations also on The White Tiger. What I love, Priyanka, is that you put your might behind this movie as an actor, as a co-producer, um, even though you have a supporting role in this, you're not headlining. This is Adarsh Gaurav's film. I mean, he is just brilliant and, and he propels it completely. Um, it felt like this is more like, for you to do this felt more like a Hollywood move than a Bollywood move. It, it's not very often in the Hindi film industry that you see things like that happen. Um, is this something you've become more comfortable with after working in the West or was this who you were always? I mean, my first movie, I came in after Interval and I died before the climax. Um, if you remember Kamine, I had eight scenes in the movie, but I was very excited about doing it. Um, you know, I've always played, it's not Baji Ramastani again, uh, my name is not in the title role, but you know, it was, I, was, I was very, very happy with the work I did in that movie. So I don't think, like I, I'm, I'm not conventionally uh, trained in thought. My thought has always been my own, um, and I've always been someone who takes risks. I did etras when I was told I'll be labeled a vamp. I did fashion when women were not helming female, um, you know, female movies. So it's definitely not a Hollywood thing for me, um, and it's a Priyanka thing for me. Of um, and I went after this movie actually as a producer first. Really? Um, I read about it um, on some trade magazine, Hollywood Reporter, Deadline, something on Twitter actually. And I called my agents. It was, I remember it so clearly. I was having my coffee in the morning and, you know, just like what I do, read the news about what's happening. And I remember I'd read the book when it had come out and, um, you know, when it was like buzzy and everyone was talking about it in like late 2000s. And I read that, you know, this, the Hollywood, um, I mean, sorry, I read that The White Tiger is being adapted by Ramin Barani, who the book was dedicated, dedicated to. to. Yes. And as a filmmaker, I knew of really well. I was at a place in my career in America where I was really looking for an immersive experience. Um, you know, I've had the good fortune of doing such a variety of roles in my work in Hindi movies and, you know, big, small, interesting work with the best directors and be able to play parts that no one expected me to play. Um, but I haven't had that yet in America. Uh, my first job in the US just happened five years ago when we met, you know, mm -hmm. I've just about played my first leading role in a movie. So it's, 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 I'm still building. And I actually, as a producer, have a lot, I've gone a lot further than I have as an actor in America right now. You know, I have a first look deal with Amazon and their faith in being able to develop some amazing shows. In fact, I'm doing six shows and like some two movies with them in development at the moment. I have a second look deal with CBS Viacom, but as an actor, I really didn't. So when I called my agents and I said, please, you know, call the producers and say that I would like to offer my services as an EP because I want to be at the helm of supporting South Asian stories in Hollywood. You know, it was such a struggle for me to be able to forget, tell a story with a completely South Asian cast, but even to be cast as a South Asian in mainstream entertainment. And I don't think this movie would have been made five years ago with an Iranian director, with an all Indian star cast in India, written by an Indian author with this budget. It wouldn't yeah. have happened, yeah. but it took streaming. It took Netflix having the faith and a global mindset. 
to say that we're going to do that. And, you know, that's how that was that was my intention is I want to be at the helm of really influxing Hollywood with South Asian stories, South Asian talent, females. And I, as a producer, have that opportunity right now. But the acting thing of it, actually, when I met Ramin for the first time, I didn't even know what Pinky's role in the show movie was going to be because in the book, she's a sort of, you know, figment of his imagination. You see Pinky through Balram's eyes. And I actually wanted to, you know, tell the story of the white tiger. And we hadn't even cast Adarsh at that time when I joined the movie. And Ramin told me about Pinky's role. I read the story and I was like, yes. I want to feel like I felt the first time I worked with Vishal Bharadwaj on Kamine. I remember the power of coming in and supporting a story with, with depth, with ingenuity, with complexity. And Ramin was the director that sort of pushes you in that direction. I had such an immersive experience with him. It's my first dramatic part, um, you know, in, in Hollywood. And yes, it's a supporting part. And I've, my, I've built my career on supporting parts. So I'm not someone who's afraid of, you know, roles or the length of a role. I don't require that to be able to make my mark, you know. Um, Stan Lavsky said once with Amitabh Bachchan quoted, and I've sort of written in my book as well, there are no small roles, there are only small actors. Yeah. And I'm definitely not a small actor. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, tell me though, do you feel that Hollywood has figured out what to do with you as an actor? Um, we're getting there, I have to say. Um, I recently, you know, got an offer for a very mainstream movie directly like not with an audition and not with like it just came to me because they were like and it, it has nothing to do with me being Indian it's just a romantic movie it's you know a great budget great studio and when I first got that offer I sat back and I was like all right you know this didn't require a definition of where I come from it was just a job that has come to me as an actor and it happened just recently so I think we're at a place where <laughs> you know, with the the help of not just me, but with a lot of South Asian people who are demanding mainstream um, entertainment to be a part of, you know, their career trajectories as well. Yeah. Mindy Kaling, Hassan Minaj, Aziz Ansari, Riz Ahmed, people who have like sat and sat up and said, you know, we are more than our ethnicities. We are actors, we are artists, and we want to prove that. I think it's taken a collective of that demand, and I include myself in that, to be able to reach a point where, um, you know, there is representation in a way, but of course we are far away from where it should be. But it's, it's, there's a start of that. I also think streaming really helps because now, I don't, like I said with White Tiger, when it was just a theatrical situation, I don't know if that movie would have been made at that budget. But now with streaming, the White Tiger is opening in 160 countries around the world. And there is such a large cross-pollination of cultures when it comes to consuming entertainment. You know, I was watching an Iranian show the other day. My mom watches K-dramas K every day, like all day. But, you know, we're consuming content from different parts of the world just because it's good. Parasite being a Korean movie with subtitles won Best Picture. So now what really is a foreign film? Like that's also a question. So I think streaming has really changed what Hollywood was and what it is going to be. And it's going to be really interesting to see that evolution. Absolutely. And you know, Riz is a front runner for as he should be. My God, that performance is stunning. Really? I yeah. just recently saw it. He's amazing. And I texted him saying that, like, you know, that's what we need to see. We need to see South Asian representation in mainstream artistic and like content, you know, not, not as the check in the box. And I was so proud and happy, not just for him, but of us as a collective. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell me, Priyanka, in, in all of this, you know, these, the, these amazing first look and second look deals and, and Hollywood, and of course, all the work you do as a global ambassador for, for UNICEF, all your humanitarian work, uh, where does Hindi cinema fit into your priorities? Well, a couple of things. Um, as a producer, it fits in in a big way. Um, you know, I had to pivot in 
working in America for a while as a producer as well, because I was just building, you know, so I didn't, I can't come in, come at it from a sense of entitlement. Ki, achha, just because I'm there, I'm going to be here too. You know, I got to like really build, I'm still building as a producer, um, you know, drawing credits as I can. But um, I really do want to do Hindi movies as long as people will have me. Um, but the, the problem is I'm still building my career in America. So it's taking a little bit of my energy and time to be able to focus on that. It took me 10 years to focus in, you know, Bollywood to eventually be at the place that I was. It, it requires building, you know, you yeah. don't get anything overnight. And I haven't definitely gotten anything overnight. So um, it is, I want to straddle both. I want to be able to do a Hindi film next year. I'm very excited about one of them. We're working on scheduling. It's with my friends. Um, but as a producer, I'm definitely, you know, um, looking at doing a lot of work in India, which may or may not star me, but it it, it has like some really cool, um, you know, envelope pushing content for Hindi, Hindi as well. You know, um, last year, Priyanka was a very, very tough year for everybody, but I felt like um, the Hindi film industry really, it was, it was such a year of loss. You know, we, we um, lost so many fine artists, of course, massive hit financially. Uh, but also just a sort of almost an existential crisis of, you know, what is and what should happen and what shouldn't happen. What sense did you make of it, seeing it all un unravel from the outside? Um, how sad from the outside? Meaning from <laughs> far away, geographically, not, not outside in spirit. <laughs> um, no, but you're right. I was watching it very closely and um, the one thing I did notice is this fear of OTT, as it's called, and or streaming. And I think, you know, the quicker we jump on that bandwagon, the smarter we are. Um, theatrical is not going anywhere. You know, the experience of, it's the cheapest form of entertainment in the country. And, you know, you buy a ticket, go to a theater, take your family and it's a, that's not going anywhere. That experience of going and watching a movie, getting your popcorn, watching it with strangers, laughing, that's going to happen. But the joy, especially after the pandemic of being able to sit with your family and consume content as soon as it comes out, that's not going anywhere either. Yeah. And the fact that it's opened up doors for us to be able to tell so many different kinds of stories, for us to cast so many different kinds of actors than just being limited to the top like 10 that, you know, we just revolved in, in movies. And I think this is giving us the ability to grow as an industry, to be able to take on talent, writers, uh, and take a chance on storytelling. And I think it's an amazing time. And I, I think it's a time to embrace that. It's a time to embrace outsiders, people who are coming in to tell different kinds of stories and actually build the industry into a larger table, you know, instead of the walls that we usually had. You know, last question, uh, Priyanka, I, I know global domination, remember we talked about that, was, has always been the aim, right? And you said to me that, that you have an entourage of 25 people, um, you know, the exact same sort of set of jobs, one team in India and one team in the West. Is that still how uh, Operation Priyanka runs? <laughs> um, it, it does run with the help of a, an amazing team. I have to say that, you know, I depend very heavily on my team. It's not as large anymore. I've, uh, it's, you know, because now I'm kind of figuring out, you know, how to navigate um, without that much help. Uh, so it's now a little bit more tighter. Uh, my team. Most of them are the same that you've met along the way. Uh, but I think the one thing that has changed is um, I've sort of found my ground a little bit. Uh, and I have a, a lot more confidence in myself in being able to deliver. And I think my peers with in both the industries, whether it's in um, Bollywood or Hollywood, have kind of also come to terms with the fact that, you know, I do bring something to the table. And that's made me have a sense of self and a sense of confidence. Um, and, you know, I'm very intentional about what I'm doing, what I'm choosing to do, um, what I'm striving to achieve. Um, so I think that's, that's a pivot. That's a change. Um, the global domination of it all, I've sort of left that behind as well. I kind of want to pursue myself as an artist now. Uh, 
it's not about it's not a popularity contest for me honestly you know um so the goal post is shifted again yes <laughs> <laughs> yes um i want to see you know and see how i can develop as an artist just like my trajectory in hindi films that i had the opportunity to have i want to be able to do that here as well and in in a few maybe a decade or so we'll be talking about unfinished part 2 <laughs> let's hope so god <laughs> knows i'm terrified of this process let's see how how it's accepted first or not oh my gosh i can't wait to read it priyanka thank you so much i can wait for you to read it <laughs> <laughs> i will be there first day first show pre order it will it will happen and and i i'm really looking forward to it you please text me once you read it let me, i i really want to know what you thought i listen for me you've always been an inspiration and i've told you this that i remember i think it was frankfurt airport or berlin airport seeing you on the cover of one of the us magazines and just going yay all by myself <laughs> <laughs> because it's just it just feels so good to see us there thank you it really is somewhere where we deserve and need to be a lot more of us yeah yeah so thank you for being the pioneer that you are and good luck hi everyone this is priyanka and if you like this video please subscribe to film companion